Originally, we considered a wide range of ideas, going from all of the chimes being arranged in a circle to only using one chime and changing the length of it using a plunger. In the end, we decided on a relatively simple box because that would be the most robust and was relatively easy to build. We added feet and supports in order to stabilize the structure. The chimes are attached by strings that can be tightened and loosened so that the chimes can be adjusted. The central beam holds everything that strikes the chime in place. And we originally planned on using two motors, but opted to switch that motor out for two solenoids because that would be simpler. We used three solenoids on our chime. For each of the solenoids we made spring, we needed to make spacers because plungers in solenoids are magnetic that chime and plunger stick together instead of going back inside. At the end of each plunger, we attached cut popsicle stick and shape block. We set up the motor to play two notes, C5 and D5. Originally, we were just going to machine an aluminum striker or use the motor without the gearbox, but we decided on this final design. At the end of the gearbox shaft is a popsicle stick striker with two nails hot glued to the front end for better sound quality when striking the chimes. On the other end is an attachment to hit the two switches that are nailed to the underside of the wooden rail. The motor keeps running until a switch is hit, which ensures the consistency of the striker hitting the chimes. The code is based on two arrays that hold the notes for the song and the corresponding beats for each note. The note function determines which note needs to be played and for how long, and then tells a solenoid or the motor to play that note. A for loop starts this process over for each note and continues until the song is done playing. By the way, it can do this. Faster.